everyone. I'm Carrie Straka, the Adult Services Department Head at the Itasca Community Library. Welcome to, to tonight's program, Make 2022 Your Breakout Year, with Sean Glock from Briggs Financial. In just a moment, I'll pop a poll up on the screen asking how many people in your household are attending. Please let me know how many people are watching in your home. Let me pull up that poll. Here we go. Looks like we've got one person in the house right now, so I will end the poll. We'll probably get a few at later attendees. Before we get started, I'd like to tell you about an upcoming program we have planned at the library. Next Wednesday, we have a virtual author visit at 7 p.m. In cooperation with other Illinois libraries, we are welcoming Sylvia Moreno Garcia, author of Mexican Gothic. You can find more details on our website. Thanks for coming again tonight, and I'll let Sean take it away. Hi, uh, thanks, Carrie. Hi, everyone. Thanks, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, uh, I, I'm excited to be joining you for tonight's topic, uh, Make 2022 uh, Your Breakout Year. Um, before we get started, I'm going to do a couple of quick things here as well. I'm going to drop some information into the chat here in case you would like to use it. You have it available to you. Just contact information if you have any questions about some of the stuff we go over for tonight or if we uh, have anything stands out to you that you want to follow up on, you're welcome to do so. Uh, that's in there as well as a copy of the slide deck I'm going to drop in there as well. That way, you know, after about taking too many notes, um, everything you have tonight that we'll be going over, you will have with you uh, after tonight as well. So those can be found out in there. There. Yep. Now they're both in. Uh, if anything comes up along the way, feel free to drop a question in the chat. I'll try to pay attention to it as best I can. Um, we have a lot to go over tonight. I think that I'm very excited to be covering the topics that we are, but it's a, there's a big breadth of, of subject matter to go through. Um, and I tried to promise not to go too long and not too quickly. Uh, so you know, that said, if anything comes up, make a note of it, put it in the chat. Uh, we're going to try to definitely give time for questions at the end. That way, you know, we can address anything at that time. Or again, if anything comes to mind later, um, by all means, reach out after the fact via email or website or give us a call. So with that, I'm going to share my screen here. Should be able to see that. All right, everybody. And we are good to go. So again, contact information is in the uh, is in the chat. Um, so who am I? Uh, my name is Sean Block, as Carrie mentioned. Um, I'm an associate advisor and financial planner with Briggs Financial Inc. Now, uh, Briggs Financial is a local independent uh, registered investment advisory firm where we provide prudent financial planning, uh, investment management, and uh, tax preparation services. Uh, we uh, proudly serve in a fee-only fiduciary capacity and uh, very highly recommend that anyone Anyone that you work with when it comes to personal finances, your finances, your money also carries with them that, that, that very important uh, standard, uh, fee only and fiduciary. Um, I also welcome you all to check out our website uh, at briggswealth.com, uh, where we have a, a ton of, of free information uh, through articles in our blog, the Briggs blog, um, as well as our podcast, Money is Personal. Uh, there's some really great information across a, a wide uh, variety of topics. So, so please, by all means, check that out as well. Um, so that said, let's get to it. So we're here to talk about how you are going to make 2022 your breakout year. Now, of the people that are in the room, I, I, and I don't know, uh, breakout. Breakout is a game when I was young. Uh, it came out before I was born. Uh, but it, it was it was big for me. It, it stuck with me. It was this it was this thing. It was it was fun. My 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 grandmother had it. On, I had an Atari, and we played it. It was fantastic. It was it was the one of the first video games that I ever really played, and I've always enjoyed it. This is something about having that 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 little line, simplistically going back and forth across the street, keeping this ball in the air from going past your little your little your little slider, your little paddle. And trying to knock the bricks that are that are above you. you know, some take a couple of hits, some take more, some and ultimately they try to break out or break through and get the ball above or take care of all the bricks. That game was addicting. That was it was so much fun. But 
I think when I think about breakout, I think there's a lot of interesting things that, that can be applied uh, to what we do, to what, what, what working towards financial improvement uh, can, you know, can carry with it. So to break out, now obviously now we're sitting here with a paddle and hitting, hitting balls towards bricks, but uh, to break out, obviously we're also not talking about less than desirable breakouts. We're not, we're not talking about you know, skin irritation or, or wildfires, uh, but, but the context in which we're talking tonight is to, is to break out from, from having otherwise been restricted or, or restrained by something requiring the need to break free or out of, right? But what is that thing that we need to break out of, to break free from? Uncertainty? And what, what am I doing? What, what am I going to do? What, 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 what am I going to do if this happens? How am I going to pay for this if that happens? Uh, uncertainty towards retirement. A am I doing enough? Uh, how much is enough? Am I ready? Uh, stress from living paycheck to paycheck, uh, just struggling to try to improve. Anxiety surrounding uh, confronting your finances, uh, providing uh, basic needs and security for yourself, for your family, uh, uh, communicating about these things with your partner, fear, fear that you don't have enough money to cover an emergency, fear that you can't cover a repair or both, fear that you just don't know what you're going to do or what you should do or what you need to do. Yes, these feelings are no joke. And they may be a part of your why, but these themselves are not restrictions, even though they make us feel the way that they do, even though the way they feel, they make us feel can most certainly feel restricting. I mean, these emotions though are results, right? And if you don't like the results, then, then we need to focus on what else could be causing that problem. So if you have these feelings about money and finances, you need to focus on the problems that are causing these results, right? So, so what then? The past? Break free from the past, along with anything else we can't control? In the entire history of, of past events that make each of us unique, um, essentially establishes our, our, our first rules by which we will play our game. And, uh, and any advantages or disadvantages that, that those rules, those parameters, those guidelines, those things come with. Now, we each get a roll of the dice that we can't even roll at birth. But, you know, the circumstances that we are given, you know, based on the prior circumstances of others, essentially set the difficulty of what those first couple of levels of your game are going to look like. Now, whereas they can be tremendous motivators as to, as to why you want to break free, but rather than thinking about these things from, in terms of as we need to break free from them, it's far more constructive them to look at them as, as rules of our game. These specific circumstances set the table. They, they establish the first level, uh, all the, the things that you're going to experience in trying to accomplish that thing. They set the size of that little paddle that you're going to move back and forth, where you're starting from. Where are you starting at? What's your cushion, your, your financial stability or, or your lack thereof? What, what did you inherit both in, in terms of finances, knowledge or, or problems from you know, parenting or education or you know, so on and so forth? The speed and the size of your ball. That's another part of the rules of the game. What you have to be ready to react to, respond to, and, and, and how quickly you have to do that and how often you have to do that. And then of course, the bricks is another rule of the game. These, these things, the number of them and how, how, how strong they are, how many times you gotta hit them, how hard you're gonna have to work at that one little thing just to get that out of your way, out of your way towards what you're trying to accomplish, what you're up against, your goals, your challenges, your brick set. So if it isn't the uncertainty, the, the stress, the anxiety, the fear, and, and we can frame it as, as such that, that the past and, and anything outside of our control aren't the objective, but, but need to be acknowledged as the rules of the game, as each of us needs to play it. So what is it? Pardon me. What is it that's controllable, that we need to focus on breaking out, breaking free from? ourselves, ourselves and our behavior and our choices. And it doesn't matter what stage 
or wage or age or circumstances in life we are each in or affected by. We are what holds us back. That's probably why this isn't, is not easy. It's, it's not, it isn't. We are, are not just our, our own closest teammate and ally in this, in this grand game of life, but we're also our biggest adversaries in this same context. People make predictable errors. By being aware, though, of the internal processes for the decisions that we make on a day-to-day -day basis, we can take that learned awareness and make it actionable. The study of decision making and, and psychology as it pertains to the world of personal finance and, and behavioral economics has provided and, and continues to do so uh, some, some fantastic uh, insight into the cognitive and emotional factors that, that drive the decisions that we make. And, and in doing so, the, the decisions that we make that ultimately come together to form our lives, shape our lives, hopefully our best lives. <laughs> Now, emotion, though, and, and the, the, the present us, that present bias, by and large, it usually wins. Now, present bias is a concept that the theory of self-control that, that basically finds that people are more likely to subconsciously be more heavily swayed towards immediate gratification rather than delayed gratification, even if the delayed gratification is, is much more rewarding, right? Makes sense. Yeah, sound about right because that immediate gratification easily, easily satisfies that immediate emotionally driven need. Will that immediate desire for a vanilla latte keep you from saving and investing and being able to retire someday? No, no, it will not. No, it won't. I don't care what anybody tells you, but, but a vanilla latte every day or every other day mixed with a myriad of other like-minded transactions definitely will. Awareness of this and, and the learned or developed ability to, to ongoingly acknowledge our decision-making process, consciously or subconsciously, and in the moment, and address the decisions that aren't, aren't aligned with your plans, that aren't aligned with your goals, that are pulling away from your ability to get further towards those goals, that can really fuel your success and help you reach them. Those little decisions they all really, really add up. No matter what rules apply in your game, you can do this. You can improve. You can, <laughs> but you need to start. And it starts with awareness. It starts with awareness. And by and large, awareness is the bigger thing that has to carry you through from start to finish. Without awareness, nothing works. But how do we do that? Well, you start by getting it all in front of you, all of it, get it all in front of you, every account, uh, checking, savings, credit cards, student loans, uh, investments, whether in a tax advantaged account or a taxable brokerage account or property or business or every balance, every debt, the, the list is, is endless. It could be anything, but whatever it is, if it applies to you, get it in front of you. What's the best method? Once you have everything together, what's the best method of tracking everything, right? Your account balances, your, your, your spending, your all this stuff. I don't know, uh, software, an app, uh, a digital document, uh, an Excel spreadsheet, uh, Google Sheets, um, a notebook. Uh, don't use the back of your hand. It wouldn't be very effective. Whatever, wherever, it doesn't matter. The, the best method is the one that works for you. It doesn't matter if it's in the form of, of software on your computer or on your phone, or if it's just a simple notebook. There's nothing wrong with that. The, the most effective and best method is the one that works for you. So use that. So when you have it all in front of you and you're looking at your transactions, you need to look at your cash flow. That's one of the most important things you need to look at, right? That's what's, that's what's going on every month. Your cash flow is your, your, your in versus your out right? It's your in versus your out and what you have left over afterwards, right? <clears throat> so looking at those categories, what is the in? Well, in is obviously anything that's coming in in the month, any, 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 any gains, any, any paycheck that you receive, any, any payments you receive, things like that. That's your income, okay? That's step one, income. Know what your income is on a monthly basis. Step two, the out. The out are all of your expenses, that out are all of your expenses that you have in any given month, okay? Um, this could be everything from, you know, an auto payment, your rent, your mortgage, your utility bills, um, 
you know, food spending, uh, uh, entertainment spending, shopping, um, pets, if you have pets, maybe pet food, veterinary bills, uh, things that maybe uh, don't happen every month, but maybe you pay once a year, like a, like a life insurance policy or car insurance every six months, something like that. Make sure you include that stuff, but break it down on a monthly basis. So if you pay it once every six months, obviously take a sixth of what you pay and include it in your monthly expenses because that has to be being planned for every month because that inevitable charge is going to come due. Make sure you have it tucked away, earmarked and funded when that day comes. Then you compare. <clears throat> what does the in look like? What does the out look like? How do they look in relation to each other, right? Did you miss anything? Uh, what do you have going to savings? Is it enough? Are you contributing to your retirement? Is that enough? Are you being realistic about the targets that you're setting for your categories in which, in which we have found a tremendous amount of disparity uh, between perception and reality? Uh, for example, food, shopping, subscriptions, entertainment, vacation, et cetera. These, these, these are, these are hot, hot, hot categories, <laughs> believe me. Then, I mean, are, are you cash flow positive and you check all the boxes? Great. It, you, your in is bigger than your out. You're doing the things, you're saving, you're retiring. Awesome. You get to focus on goal funding or, or growth or, or whatever your next steps are or whatever you want to see realized for your best life or, or to pass on to those that follow you. Um, we just always have to be make sure that we don't take our, our eye off the ball and get too comfortable. You know, inflation alone may outpace your income, savings, the bonds, CDs, et, et cetera. And, and who knows what the future will hold. <laughs> so definitely be on top of this stuff and don't take your eye off, off the price, okay? Check in regularly. That is huge. With awareness, you need to keep cultivating it, build that muscle, make that ingrained in the routine of life. Check in on what's going on. See what's happening in your balances, your transactions, your charges. See where you are in relation to your targets. What's going on with your spending? What's going on in your accounts? Do you have any fees? Did you pay any interest? Overdrafts, perhaps. A lot of people aren't even aware of these little incremental charges, overdraft fees, ATM fees, but these little, little things really add up. Here's an interesting stat. Consumers spent $15.5 million, million dollars in overdraft fees in 2021. What? What? No, that's a lot of money just to not have those dollars that you should where they are. Um, that's tough. That's a lot of money. Don't be a part of that group. And that, that takes awareness, though. That takes paying attention. That takes checking in. Okay. And how often you ask? Well, I mean, honestly, this is another one of those where it depends. It depends on what works for you. You don't have to check this every day to be successful. You don't have to check it every other day to be successful. We've honestly found that a frequency of about once a week, one time per week, to be kind of a sweet spot. You don't really get more effective doing it more frequently than that. Less frequently than that, you start to have too much time slippage. You're not really aware of what's going on. Maybe you could be slipping from, from your trajectory. Um, not checking in more frequently than that is it would be would, would be you know problematic. But being able to check in once a week, set a reminder in your phone or your calendar, whatever that may look like, make it a part of your, your Saturday morning. Saturday morning, Saturday morning, coffee and finances. Even if it's only 10 minutes, just check in, do this, do the thing and be aware of what's going on in your financial picture. I, you can even put a sticky note on the fridge or something to remind you. <laughs> Find a way that works for you though, but keep the recurring frequency. So some common spending pitfalls to pay attention for. Well, the biggest, the biggest disparity that we see between perception and reality and a category in which we generally all spend way, way too much money, food. <laughs> Does that come as a shock? Maybe, I don't know. Um, now you may think that that's, that's not me. I, I don't go around rocking surf and turf and, and all that stuff or eating out at expensive sushi restaurants. And, and you know what, you may be right. I, but this form of, of death by a thousand cuts can come in the form of, of Taco Bell, McDonald's, Popeyes, Domino's, Chili's, Papa John's, and, and Starbucks, anything. 
insert your the restaurant fast food of choice. <laughs> if, if not the biggest, or one of the biggest, if not the biggest areas in which financial planners see new clients vastly unaware of how much they're spending is on eating out and convenience. Believe me, it, it really adds up. Then, you know, you add on the fact that we've been seeing an increase in the cost of food, you know, between uh, 2015 and, or March of 2015 and pre-pandemic 2020, food inflation had been less than 2%, right? Less than 2%. More recently, inflation has been closer to 7%, okay? That's, that's not nothing. That's something. And if that's growing more than your income is, who look out, because um, that's, that's serious. Another pitfall? Here, here's another pitfall. Do you see charges on your credit card for online orders for which you don't remember what they were for? Do you receive Amazon Prime boxes on your doorstep and not have any clue as to what's in the box? Well, then you might suffer from a common infliction called primnesia. <laughs> shopping, shopping. Did that one surprise anybody either? Now, I'm going to give you some great strategies to help with these in just a little bit. And they may help tackle these things, these, these decisions as they come up, and maybe help serve as a filter when, when you're faced with them. Um, the, but these are really our behemoths of bad behavior. Um, and, and where might we find another one, um, another pitfall? Uh, subscriptions. Disney Plus, Netflix, Audible, Pandora, Amazon Prime, Adobe Suite, Crunchyroll, The Economist, food subscriptions like Blue Apron or HelloFresh, any one of the a million kinds of different uh, what novelty or uh, surprise box subscriptions like for clothing or uh, whatever. These can really, really add up and absorb your monthly cash flow quickly, very quickly. We've also been at home much more frequently in the last couple of years. Yeah, so I'm, there's probably been an increase in the utilization, right? A little tip on this one. Okay, start by making sure you're aware of all the subscriptions that you're currently paying for. You'd be surprised at how many people are carrying at least one subscription that, that they forgot they had. Then take a good look at the subscriptions that you do have. Do you use them? How frequently? You know, do you use them once a day, once a week, once a month? That one Saturday, like three months ago? <laughs> If there are services that are just not being used that frequently, maybe these monthly charges could be better served getting applied in another direction. That the one that helps your plan, that, that helps the sustainability of your plan. Or at least if you can't completely part ways, and I do understand when that happens, uh, perhaps it could be switched to something rotational. You know, you, you carry Netflix for a little while and then you watch all the things, then you drop that and then, you know, Hulu for a while and watch the things and, and so on and so forth. It's, it's really just that every 15 or $50 per month, how, how much can that one charge do? Well, I mean, one, how much can five to 10 of those charges or, or 12 months of those five to 10 charges of 15 to $50 a month. But once again, a million little cuts. So success here relies upon behavior, right? We need to set a plan and we got to stick to it. But when we do that, we have to set goals that are realistic to live by in the day in, day out, right? I'm only going to spend $100 a month on food. And I'm going to live on rice and beans and water. Um, that's, that's not realistic. <laughs> um, I mean, even if it does last for a month or maybe two um, and to get to where you need to be, how good are you going to feel about doing that? I'm going to go ahead and assume there may be a relapse uh, in the near future with regards to your, your plan and strategy uh, if, if you go that route. But that said, you have to be mindful of, of, of what it, it takes for you to live, what you need, what your needs are. Um, and that's very important not, not to confuse that with wants. Um, don't don't uh, allow yourself to be empowered to make these decisions and have the ability to make decisions. But keep yourself in check. You have to have some accountability as well. You know, you have to include savings for retirement when you're doing your spending plan, when you're putting together these numbers and figuring out what needs to go where every month. Again, it brings it back to the cash flow, but include savings, include savings for retirement, medical expenses and emergencies. Automate, 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 automate. Set it, get a system that works for you and automate whatever you can of it. 
the uh, the savings, the retirement, the goal funding, investments, everything. If you have the ability to automate it, and again, this comes back to awareness because you have to make sure you're not going to run the risk of overdraft because you won't let that happen, right? Because you're paying attention. Automate everything. It takes the weight off your shoulders, less to do things on the list. And believe it or not, it, 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 it breeds success. It, it really does. It helps facilitate the things actually getting done, which, you know, is what we're all trying to accomplish here, right? Um, but once you get that going, it's, it, it's like once you get that automation going of everything kind of getting filled on its own and you can kind of step back and be like, wow, this is all this is all feeling pretty good. I don't have to I don't have to do anything. It's like this is going to savings. This is going here. Retirement's good. I'm going my goal funding. My, this savings is going to be on target. This vacation is on target. Our, our down payment for a home is on target. All that stuff feels really good. Sit back, relax. It's kind of like it's kind of like in the breakout game. And again, I don't know if you ever played it. It's like in the breakout game when you get one little like row completely broken out and, and the ball comes down you, you, and, you, and you hit it and it goes up and it like goes up along the top and it's just like ding, 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 and just knocking out all these all these it's, it's crazy but it feels really good um you kind of sit back you can stretch a little bit you don't have to twitch the joystick or anything you don't have to move just watch and let the magic happen that's what it is that's what it is automate it keep track keep the awareness up but let the magic happen <laughs> so life is risky business right and we need to understand how that is the case for us. It turns out it's not always just about making money. It's about protecting the money you have. It's about, it's about protecting yourself or protecting your life, your, your lifestyle, um, and, and minimizing, if not reducing or removing uh, the risks that could jeopardize you and your ability to, to do what you're trying to do or accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. Job security is a big one. How secure are you in your job? You're pretty secure. Because there's a lot of people that had that same mentality pre pre 2020, and on top of the closures and the layoffs through the pandemic, you know, businesses ultimately ended up needing to change the way they do business. They had to to adapt to these new challenges, and and quite frankly, the, for those that weren't affected by the closures right off the bat, how many more were affected when, you know, the business needed to way change the way it did business, and that new way of business didn't involve needing you. Um, that was a whole other layer of unemployment. The Federal Reserve study showed that about 40% of adults wouldn't be readily able to cover $400 in an emergency with cash on hand or in savings. Wow. Um, that, that since, since I, since I started being aware of my financial awareness uh, uh, picture and trying to start kind of looking into how I can dovetail that into a career where I can help people and try to spread financial literacy and education about this thing, that statistic has always stuck out to me. Uh, uh, for some reason, above most others, it's this one. It's crazy. It's crazy to think about. Uh, and I've been there. I've totally been there. It's been a while, <laughs> but I, I can definitely relate. Now, now this number, you know, 40% had improved to, to um, it, it had improved. It had improved by 10% in the July of in July of 2020, but you know shortly thereafter it very quickly regressed straight back to almost where it's at now, um, being four percent up from where it's at. I, it's 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 wild. Um, you really need to be ready for emergencies. You really do. You know, um, medical. It, here's another what if. Uh, let's say you were to get sick a couple of times that require a hospital stay and uh, you don't have enough part to paid time off to cover the, the, you know, the time that you need to take and you lose wages because of it. Um, now, let's say then the bills that you are now due for are beyond what you're covered for in terms of your health care. Now you have to pay those on top of that. Or if you can't pay them out, right, you got to find a way to work them into the monthly cash flow. Ugh. Talk about really cutting off your ability to try to do what you need to do or try to show up your, show up your ability for security. You know, if your health savings or savings in general is too low to cover the charges, you got to pay monthly. And then that takes away, again, the cash flow, which then could very well put those charges the way of the credit card, which, oh boy, if you're in this room and you've experienced credit card, it is not a happy place to be. Um, then your, uh, your, your charges, your expenses, your food, your gas, your stuff, then just carries with it a 20% or higher rate. Um, yeah, you're paying a lot more all of a sudden for all the things you have to buy on a day-to-day -day basis just, just to live. If you think this situation any of this emergencies, medical, um, you know, 
is so rare it can never happen to you unfortunately it is the number one cause for bankruptcy in america it's it's very serious but you don't you don't plan for it you know you don't think that it could happen to you um until it does um which is, is a problem you have to be forward thinking you got to get ahead of it and plan for the future you know it's like you could you could take all the steps you, you, you could you could exercise and walk for miles a day be the healthiest fittest most most health conscious person in existence but but it won't it won't protect you from getting hit by a bus uh, when you turn the corner on the street it, it just doesn't so i think it's the point there is just to not become complacent and keep doing those things but but, but don't gamble that these sort of things could never happen to you it, it's it, it's those people that, that take that gamble, that take that bet, that really don't recover when these things do happen. Um, so yeah, <laughs> home, auto, et cetera. That et cetera is the biggest category because who's to say what emergency could mean for you? And then of course, negative cash flow. That is another really big risk. Not being aware of what's happening in your monthly spending habits, your monthly in versus your out, negative cash flow very quickly puts you in a position of deficit, um, negative debt. Um, carrying with you interest, having to pay more. Um, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a dark place to be on and it's a very, very slippery slope. So uh, don't get there. You know, and if you are, you're fighting back to get from there, you need to, again, build that awareness and figure out how. What's the first step? What's the next step? And how am I going to be able to do that? You got to be ready with savings. Protect yourself from risk. The, 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 the risk that you protect yourself with pardon me, by having savings to cover a $400 emergency and not be a part of that 40% of adults in this country that, that can't cover that charge. Um, you, just, you sleep a lot easier at night with savings. So what could $100 a month do? You know, we talk about budgeting, we talk about, you know, income. And don't forget income. Income is a really big side of, of things. You know, people think about finances and personal finance. They think about budgeting. What can I cut? What can I shave? What can I go without? But and not enough time is spent on the development side. You know, it turns out when you make a lot more money or you make more money, you can do more things. Um, life gets easier to accomplish the things you're trying to do. Uh, a $400 expense may not be as big of a thing when you have more than $400 in discretionary, free, undirected money that's coming in every month because you're doing everything else and you just happen to be making more money. It, it's a lot. But when you do cut, when you can cut, what does $100 do? A couple, a couple of subscriptions, maybe one trip out to Taco Bell a week that you're cutting off of your already existing four. I don't know. <laughs> However you get to the 100 bucks, $100 can actually be a lot of money. It's $1,200 a year. Now, $1,200 a year, that's, that's pretty sweet, right? I'm sure nobody else is thinking, what would I do with 1,200 bucks, right? Um, <laughs> but if, if you take that 1,200 and, and you assume... Um, well, you apply a little forward thinking investments. You're talking about an S&P average market performance of about 10%, which, which is the approximate historic uh, annualized average return of the S&P uh, since, its, since its inception inception through 2019. Sorry about that jargon, but <laughs> taking the uh, average of the S&P since its inception. Um, and and to, to be fair, it, it has been much more rosy as of recently, by and large, the last since the pandemic hit, um, the, the market has been doing pretty well um, until a little more recently. But that said, uh, that number is pretty favorable. So 10%, let's apply some fun math, right? So if you're taking that $100 at the start of every month, start it every month because you know you want to pay yourself first, $100 at the start of every month, okay? At that 10%, after 10 years and $12,000, so, so $1,200 a year, 10 years of contributions, that $12,000 that would be in your savings account or whatever would have grown to being $20,146. That's pretty good, right? That's from 12,000 to 20,146. It's pretty good. 10%. Okay. Over 10 years after 20 years and $24,000 of contributions, you'd have a balance of $72,399. And here's where it gets nuts. Okay. That hundred dollars every month, diligence, intentional spending, $100 a month. This is where it gets absolutely bonkers. After 25 years and $30,000 in principal payments or contributions, you would have a balance of $124,316. And on that nice back end of the curve where it's really got the upper trajectory, maintaining the same statistics, obviously, after 30 years and 36,000, again, just five years later than 25 years, $207,929. That's time value. 
That's growth. That is what $100 a month can do for you when you're playing the long game, when you're playing for the long term. Okay. It's, that's no joke. I mean, that's not even a loss of present. I, I, I'll, looking at a number like that should be easy to be able to be like, you know what, you know what, I will, I will pass on, on the extra Starbucks run. I will, I will do that. <laughs> if it gets me there, um, that's a pretty big win. Let that be your, your immediate gratification. Let that be your motivator, knowing what it is that you're cultivating, what that seed that you've planted and are starting to grow is going to look like in, in time, what fruit it's going to bear in time. Some strategies that can help. Here's the fun stuff, right? Strategies. Schedule days or entire weekends with no spending. Okay, if, if you can do that, Take it a step further and challenge yourself, but, but try to, to target your days. Try to, try to target which days you're going to do the thing. So say, for example, um, you, know, you, uh, you like to go grocery shopping on Mondays and uh, Saturdays. You go twice, you, know, you get your stuff for the week on Monday, and then Saturday you pick up whatever else you needed for the weekend you know, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Then those are your days. Try to set those, ingrain those as, as being your spend days. Every other day of the week, if you need something, but it's not a spend day, well, then try to hold yourself to not spend on that day. Try to wait to make purchases, wait to make, to click that, you know, uh, uh, purchase button on your, on your phone um, until you get to a spend day. This will do a couple of great things for you. One, it'll help try to help narrow and focus what it is that you're spending, what's really important to be spending on based on what you need. But additionally, um, being targeted, um, it allows you a little bit of time to breathe and think, right? I mean, we, we have many things that come through our minds on such a rapid pace every single day, whether it be through social media or through email or TV or, or whatever it may be, right? A million little things. Well, I mean, it's, it's hard for us to then, then, you know, take that and, and, and expect that we'll never accidentally hit that add to cart and then purchase or purchase now or whatever it is. And, and manufacturers and retailers, believe it or not, they, uh, they like to make it easy for us, right? They make it really easy for us to be like, Hey, order that thing, boom, send, Oh, it's going to be getting here tomorrow. Fantastic. Um, getting a spend day. Targeting your spend days will allow you to put something in a cart and then take a step back. Be like, I can't, I can't put purchase yet. I'll put it in the cart. I'll wait. It's not a spend day. Give it a couple of days. Maybe you'll find when you get to your spend day that you didn't need that thing as much or want that thing as much and you changed your mind. Well, you can delete it from your cart. Or, you know, worst case scenario, it's still in your cart. You can click buy now. You can click purchase then. But at least give yourself that little bit of buffer. Keep track though. Keep track, and if, if it works, if you're doing good, try to push yourself a little farther. You can also keep an eye on energy conservation, conservation opportunities around the house. I mean, I always joked about how our parents, you know, yell at us about, you know, uh, stop letting all the, 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 the hot air out or, or turn off the lights when you leave a room or close the refrigerator door and don't turn the heat up to 80 just so you can sit in t-shirt and shorts. I, these things uh, we all joked about hearing, I mean, you, you, you could do them. Uh, and if you do them, yeah, that might help. <laughs> um, try setting your, your thermostat, for example, down a couple extra degrees. Just and don't say anything to anyone. Set it down two degrees. See if anybody notices after a week. See if you notice after a week. It could help. It really could help. But pay attention to what you're getting in terms of utility bills. They do a pretty good job on your statements showing where you're kind of falling with your energy usage. See if you are spending more than you really kind of should be. And if you are, take a look internally and in what's going on around you. What's being left on? What, what can you do to help? Where are you losing energy? Um, you can also look for free or low cost experiences where you live, like go to a local park or a wildlife preserve, go to the library. Now, it, it, uh, it isn't a little known secret that libraries are a fantastic source <laughs> of not just the wealth of literature and knowledge, but entertainment and stuff. And just use them. They're fantastic for resources. There's a lot of free things that, that you can do or get involved in. Um, now, of course, yeah, we live in a bit of a different world these days, but it doesn't mean everything is completely stopped and you can still enjoy some of the things getting outside. Well, maybe not when it's you know, 10 degrees, but <laughs> you, you see my point. Um, or consider volunteering. Uh, there are a lot of volunteer organizations that could really use your help and getting out and doing some good for your local community you know, or for any cause for that matter. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a good thing to do. 
it, it's a great way to meet up, get out and meet other people, meet good people too. Um, and definitely make sure you have a means of encouragement and accountability. Okay, it's, it's great to have a cheerleader. It, it's, it's great, but you, you got to hold yourself accountable too. Now, you can't cheat yourself. You can't, you can't, you can't outthink yourself. Um, you can't lie to yourself. Try to ask yourself things ongoingly and, and be honest <laughs> what your answer is, but ask yourself things like, you know, this, 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 this thing, does it get me closer to or farther away from my goals, from what I'm trying to do? Um, if, if I can't do this, what, what, what can't I do as a result? Or what, what can I do as a result? Or vice versa. If, if I don't do this thing, what am I allowing myself to be able to continue to do without risking that, right? And what are my goals? This is a huge thing. What are my goals? People don't know what their goals are. This is sometimes the hardest step for people to think about and deserves a good amount of thought. What are your goals? What are your goals? Where do you want to see yourself five, 10, 30 years from now? It's important to do that work. A few more initial bricks to target. Fun stuff. Employer provided what? Hmm. A retirement plan. Hmm? <laughs> How about a retirement plan? Uh, 401k, 403b, profit sharing, stock options, RSUs, pensions. There's a, a myriad of different kinds and different letters and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, but by and large, uh, something you need to know is you need to know what it is that's being offered. I know you may have to ask HR for an updated copy of the employee handbook, or you may have to dig it out from wherever it is you put it in the beginning, but you need to know what's being offered to you. Um, are you offered or receiving an employer matched contribution uh, for your retirement plan? That's free money. <laughs> that is free money. If they're offering to match your contributions to a retirement plan, they're, they're offering to give you more money. Um, and if you, you don't take it, well, then you're kind of just leaving compensation laying on the floor. Um, don't, don't leave money on the floor, especially if your employer is a payroll department. Uh, consider those contributions a part of your compensation and take it. Now, you should be strategic as far as what you do then with that, what that plan is, what it consists of, and how it's being invested. But that said, if you have a matching contribution, take it but know what you're being offered. I can't tell you how many people have no idea what their employer provides in terms of retirement planning. And, and since, since the employer provided pension has gone the way of the, you know, the, the, you know, the, the sunset a long time ago, this is in our responsibility. This has been in our hands. We have to take steps to make sure we're doing right by our future selves, right? In addition to that, Health benefits, you know, are you offered as a part of your health insurance plans, free preventative screenings, checkups, cleanings, x-rays, any of the above? Are, are you doing those things? More often than not, you're provided preventative care. You're provided with these things. These, these are part of your plan. They're a part of what you're paying for. Use them. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 there for you. Um, you'd run a diagnostic on your on your computer or or your car. Um, maybe we should all do the same for ourselves. <laughs> but what else does your health insurance cover provide as well? I mean, does it provide uh, mental health counseling? Any of those coverages? It's important to be aware of. And what other benefits? There could be a lot. There could be one sentence or two or three sentences in a pair uh, that you just glance over and aren't even aware that you have something that's being offered to you. You could have short or long-term disability provided at no cost, a life insurance policy. Um, you can have gym or fitness reimbursement, a tuition uh, reimbursement, or, or student loan uh, reimbursement. It's a thing. It, these things are common, but if you don't know what's being offered to you, I mean, you can't, you can't take advantage of them, right? Once again, the big overarching theme awareness awareness is key be aware mm. <laughs> another another fun initial break to target <laughs> with your trajectory of that ball as you bounce it off the, the the paddle um when you're increasing your awareness is is to look at your taxes um i know boo taxes uh, <laughs> but there are some things to certainly make a note of, at least on a very base level. 
Okay. Uh, if you don't like to do taxes, you don't do your taxes, you don't want to have anything to do with it, you should at least be informed. You should at least know what's going on or know how the rules, laws, or internal revenue code applies to you. Um, first and foremost, do you usually receive a large refund? If you do, and I'm saying this, this is very important. Do you usually receive a, a large refund? Because if you do, you are more than likely withholding too much throughout the year. It's like, Think about it this way. You're giving the government an interest-free loan of your money out of pocket, right? Right. So that money that's being withheld could otherwise be in your pocket throughout the year, as opposed to having to wait till the aftermath, the fallout, to get it back in a lump sum. No, I like to use that money for vacation spending. Well, okay, well, then that's that's an intention. That's that's a why. That, but you could also be funding that throughout the year or handling whatever emergency might come your way should that happen because you'll actually have the money in pocket if you're not getting more withheld than you need to by giving it away ahead of the time. Now, I'm not saying don't pay your taxes. I'm saying pay what you owe, but that's it. Pay what you should, but no more. Um, and take a look at what that is. Because again, you could be taking, stripping money out of your pocket that you could otherwise need to pay for the things you need, shelter, basic needs, food, whatever that may be. Be careful though. Be careful to take too much away from 2021's filing results though, because there are a lot of changes that apply only to 2021. Okay. Now that won't, these things that a number of the things that change 21 won't change without further legislation in the future. So, so know that some of the things that have happened for 2021 as, as you, or as you're working with someone for filing this year, that those changes won't necessarily be applicable for 2022. So if you're looking at withholding and changing what withholding, you need to look at 2022 separately and looking at this target next year instead, focus on what you're going to be making, what you're going to be applying or qualifying for, what you're your life situation will be uh, it comprised of and how would that fit your taxable liability or taxable situation at the end of the year. Game plan for it that way. Don't use this one as, as, as your sole source of information because it may be a bit of an outlier. Okay. Just something to keep in mind. <laughs> Taxes can be quite complex, you know, and, and if you don't know, don't guess. <laughs> that's that's what I'll say there to that. Do the research. Um, you know, there's a lot of information mm -hmm. online. Um, make sure you're using a credible source. IRS.gov is a good place to go. There's a lot of Q&A, a lot of questions that are on there that make it you know, pretty pretty straightforward and easy to understand. You don't have to read through tons of sections of, of, of the, the Eternal Revenue Code to find your answers, but you start there. But if, if you don't know, if you can't find the answer, then reach out to someone that may know. Uh, someone that knows what they're talking about, a professional or something to that degree. Um, uh, know what deductions or credits you qualify for. That's important. Um, watch out for updates. Uh, they come late to the party sometimes. Uh, last year, <laughs> last year, uh, our firm was, uh, we hit the ground running with filing taxes last year. And we were hitting every, every our clients were excited. It was like, woohoo, we're getting taxes done right off the bat. They, they, they were just hounding us, get them done. We want them done. We're like, yeah, right. We're awesome. Great. Let's roll. Well, uh, shortly in the tax filing season, the rules all changed. A lot of them. That applied to a lot of people. A lot of people that received unemployment. A lot of people that received advanced payments of the premium tax credit. So on and so forth. These all changed. These laws, rules changed, requiring us to all then make amendments, clients to make amendments, people to make amendments, and then having to do the tax thing all over again. Be aware that there are updates and they could happen at any time. So keeping you to the ground. Okay. Um, now, again, there are a lot of updates that happened for this year with regards to specifically the, the uh, child tax credit. And uh, uh, another one that I think is kind of getting overlooked a little bit, but the uh, child independent care credit. Um, those are big changes that can mean a lot for a lot of people this year. Um, be aware of how and if they affect you. Success starts at the bottom. It does. It starts at the bottom, but it's got to start somewhere. You have to shore up your foundation in this grand game of life that you're playing. The most important game that you possibly could be playing in your life. Uh, living costs and household spending. That's, that's, that's step one. You got to shore up your, your security, your ability to have a roof over your head. Um, you need to provide yourself then 
Level two, emergency savings. You need to have that savings. It's so important. When something happens, you need to be able to provide yourself from that. But think about not only what that means in terms of having the savings in the bank, but think about what that means for how you feel. How, how, how much stress or anxiety or, or fear you carry with regards to the what ifs, the uncertainties, the not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring. You know, you sleep a lot better at night knowing if something happens, you know what, it's going to suck, but I'm good. We're good. We got it. We got that thing. And it's going to be okay. There's nothing that compares to that feeling. That's why it's so important. Secure your, your foundation, secure your protection against risk, secure your savings. And then debt elimination. Debt elimination, that's a huge, huge corrosive to financial stability and financial standing. Debt elimination is huge. I mean, a credit card debt carries up to 20, 20 plus percent interest rate. That, that doesn't help pay down balances, believe me. Um, and then once you get from those things, you shore up your position, you have a solid foundation, your living costs, household spending, your emergency fund, your debts, all good, gangbusters, awesome, boom, you're breaking out. Then it's time to move on to protection further for the insurance, long-term asset protection, and the great wealth building game. Um, it's about growth. It's about living your best life um, and, and, and being able to feel good about that. Um, these, these levels to the pyramid are so very important, but you can't hit a, a cheat code. There's no, there's no, I'm going to skip the first three levels and just go to level four. It doesn't work that way. You, you have to do it the right way. You have to play the long game. Remember, check in your progress and maintain awareness of what's going on, where your targets are, and where you are in relation to them. Don't waste time looking for, for get rich quick systems to, to magically fix everything. No, no, if someone had the, the, no, no, focus on the long game, okay? There's no, there's no cheat codes here. Don't focus on that, it's a tremendous waste of time. And remember to take a breather. Rome wasn't built in a day and neither will your financial freedom. Um, but, but every little bit, every little step, every day, Add it up, can get you there. Establish positive behaviors. Because once you set them, once you set them, these improved habits won't just help you attain the wealth, it will, they, they will help you keep it. They will carry on in, in how you live your life, in living your best life, and what that best life looks like. Your expectations, meaning your level of content, of, of, of happiness. Um, it's really important. So, this year, in 2022, break out. Break the behaviors that are keeping you from living your best life. You're the only one holding you back. Break the bonds, the harness, the mold. I don't break your back, but break the cycle. And start a new course, a new, a new trajectory. And there are going to be times when that little ball just, just it will not hit the mark you're aiming it for. It, it'll take a crazy bounce sometimes, uh, unexpectedly, that, that is seemingly impossible to move the thing to get it to recover. I, you know what? It's okay. It's not, it's not game over. Just, just be careful not to take your eyes off of what you're doing for too long. You'll miss the ball completely. Like I said before, there's no, no cheat codes to fast track this game. It's a long game. Play the long game. Yes, <laughs> this game can be very hard, at least for a while. But you can affect how long that is the case. Because as you play this game, believe it or not, after a certain point, it actually does get easier. It's just hard to see that sometimes. You just, you have to actually play the game if you want to try to win. Now, with that, I, I want to offer you all a, a resource uh, a, a, to a wealth of great information uh, through our website. Uh, by all means, check it out, BriggsWealth.com. We have uh, our, our podcast, Money is Personal, where we have over 100 episodes now of, of, of fantastic information, um, great listens. Uh, the Briggs blog, 
we kick those out as often as we can. There's some great topics there as well, always coming out uh, with that. But we have archived tons of back backlog of, of, of great, great info there. Uh, we do and post uh, regular uh, classes, webinars, things like that. Um, so there's information always to be found on our website for things we're doing in the community for education and spreading financial awareness and literacy and all that fun stuff. Um, also connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, lots of good content that we have going out there. We have a really good, uh, really good setup there and some really good information that might be able to help you along the way. Um, and definitely look us up on Google. Yay. Um, you know, with that, if you want to improve, <laughs> we want to help. Um, it, the world of personal finance can be very complex, very overwhelming, very, very complicated. And, and the, at least what I found when I was getting into this career is it's very muddy. Um, it's very muddy. It's very hard to know that you, you, it's hard to know what you're getting into, what you're getting involved with. You know, financial advisors, planners aren't just for rich people. Talk to someone, talk, reach out to someone. Remember fee only and fiduciary. Those things are huge in, in, in this realm. And, um, uh, make sure that somebody's in your corner and your corner only. You know, you want your coach, you want your, you know, your advisor to be uh, to be rooting for you without any other any other things that you're not aware of. Uh, but you can do this. You can. You just you have to break them old. Oop. And and that's the thing. That's that's us. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna leave that up that way, just in case if anybody would like to, um, they can grab that that information off of the. Um, off of the PowerPoint there as well. And with that, I mean, I'll hand it back over to Carrie. I don't have, uh, I don't have anything else for you at this point in time, but uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed your information that, that you received tonight. I, I wish you the best of luck uh, in your financial freedom and your financial future and the attainment of said. Um, and again, if, if you have any questions about anything we went over today, um, you know, by all means, don't hesitate to, uh, to reach out. Um, we'd be happy to hear from you, happy to sit down for, you know, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever, and, uh, and talk about whatever might be on your mind. Um, but with that, I hope that you have all the best of luck in breaking out in your 2022. Um, yeah, I'll put this on the back slide here at the very end of it in case you want the contact info. Ooh, we went through a lot of information tonight. I am shocked that we stayed uh, on point with time. Huh? <laughs> I, 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 I'm pleased with this. I hope I didn't, I hope I didn't go too fast. No, I think uh, then, it's great. It was really good information. Um, it's just about eight o'clock. Does anybody have any questions or anything for Sean? Just um, pop them into the chat or the Q and A at the bottom of your screen. And don't forget, there's a there's a copy of the slide deck in the chat. So if you want to grab that and take that with you, you can always refer back to it if you need to. Uh, if you have any questions that come up after tonight, after we close the chat, you know, by all means, you can still shoot them our way. Uh, go to the website, Um, We'd be happy to, you know, see what's going on and see if we can help. If you want to improve, we want to help. Um, yeah, but we'd be happy to hear from you. I don't see any questions. I think we did a good job. I don't know. <laughs> you did a great job. I have to say really quick, I love the idea about um, setting target spending days. I never thought about that before. Such a great Yeah, idea. and now you have to keep in mind things like utilities, the rent or mortgage processing, those those things, they don't count. You don't, they don't count. So if it's a Thursday and you're like, ah, my, my electric bill processed, ah, I didn't stick to my spending. <laughs> it doesn't count. This is discretionary spending. So it's like if you're food shopping, if you're, if you're filling up a cart on Amazon, if you're, <laughs> if you're considering anything, try to frame it like that. Now, we, we typically try to say two, two spend days is a, is a great place to start and see where your habits fall in relation to that. Um, but yeah, what, I'll give you one more, one more fun tip. I, <laughs> I, uh, with regards to the food spend, People have, have, uh, tend, we've seen a lot of issues with people when they go grocery shopping, they get, they get drawn to different things. Like they, I, for me, it's Oreos or ice cream. If I'm walking down those aisles, I'm like, my eye just is drawn. And I'm just like, I want to so bad. Uh, <laughs> and sometimes I do, cause you know, I, 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 I am empowering myself to do that. But, <laughs> um, that said, there's a great way people can kind of minimize the risk that they're exposed to with regards to the last minute purchases at the, at the counter, um, uh, online ordering and pickup. It, it's free. Uh, you can literally make your cart as if you're making your, your, your list of things you need from the grocery, place the order online, drive to the jewel, 
park outside, let them know you're there, and they bring it out to your car for free. I'm sorry, that's a win. It saves my time. It saves my risk of, 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 of wandering around, not being able to find something. It saves wow. me having to deal with having my two little kids in the grocery store. It's fantastic. And, and it curbs any impulse buying. It's great. <laughs> I actually thought of a question. You talked about automating as far as like mm -hmm. savings and stuff goes. Yeah. What do you think about automating bill payment? Absolutely. Absolutely. Automate everything. Everything that you can automate. Okay. Um, for a couple of different reasons. And now when it comes to credit cards, it's a little bit different. You want to automate and set your maybe your minimum. That way it serves as like a hedge, a protection against ever missing a payment, right? A lot of people when when they don't always, don't always keep the best eye on their credit scores. One late payment can make a significant impact on your credit score. And what that then may do is impact your interest that you're uh, approved for and the amount that you have to pay for everything you buy the rest of your life, or, or the big ticket purchases. Um, setting up an automated system with which to have those funds automatically being transferred from the account that you intend them to. And it's important to make that intend them to because you have to, again, add that to your level of awareness and make sure it's happening. But it, it removes the necessity for you to have to remember to do that thing on that certain day every single month. Um, know what that's going to look like. Have an idea. If you're, if you're getting those, that information in front of you, if you're looking at what your expense is in that category, if you know what to expect when you get the bill from NICOR or whatever, it auto paying shouldn't come as a surprise because you're already planning that in terms of your monthly cash flow. You know that what's going to go out is less than what's going to come in. And as long as you're kind of paying attention to what you're doing along the way in the areas of food and shopping and so on and so forth, you know the funds should be there as long as that bill ends up being right around where you expect it to. When it doesn't, of course, you have to maybe accommodate or look at what you need to do to adjust. But that said, automating everything from, 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 from bill paying to you know the debt payments, auto payments, um, rent, mortgage, all that stuff, uh, automate everything. And on top of it, though, people tend to stop there. Don't. Automate savings. Automate savings. Some, some people don't always realize that you can also do this out of your, you can get it completely out of your hands. Say, for example, you want to contribute $500 every month to your Roth IRA and $500 every month to your savings account. Well, you can set that up through payroll at work. You can have payroll direct X amount of funds to a different account in your savings account and have that be taken care of before you even see the pay period before you even see that money in your checking account. So as long as you're, 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 you're existing though in a, in, a, in a strategy and in an environment in which you're sustainably not at risk of overdrafting or not having enough funds to meet whatever the habits are, that are happening are, 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 <laughs> are providing in terms of results, um, it's, it's just, it's like a set it, forget it, and let's go. Right. It's a great way of paying yourself too, like you mentioned. Yeah. Always think about trying to pay yourself first. Everybody always kind of tries to think, okay, I'll pay all my bills and then whatever I have left over, I'll put in savings. Try to flip that. Try to flip it and do it the other way around. It prioritizes getting yourself paid first, then doing other things. And then, you know, if you run into a shortcoming at the end of the month or you run into a problem, guess what? You can pull it back from savings, but don't think about it that way. Try to get it out of there and get it out of your, just get it done and get it out of the way. That way, psychologically, you're less likely to then, pull that back. It's harder. It feels worse. You're like, oh, I have to come caught back from savings. I don't want to do that. Um, this gives you the opportunity to be able to, to fill that bucket first instead of letting the fallout of whatever things happen throughout the month decide how fast or how slow, rather, you're going to fill that, that bucket or that savings account or that vacation bucket or whatever that might be. Right. It's a great tip. All of them were yeah. great tips. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It was Really good. We don't have any questions, but hopefully the people that were here watching will contact you and we're going to put the um, recording up on our YouTube channel. So they'll be able to check you out there too. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. I was, it was, I was very pleased and very happy and very excited to be joining you tonight. It's always yeah, good doing these things. It was great to have you. Nice to meet you. Take care. Yeah, you too, Gary. You take care. All right. Have a good rest of your night. Bye everyone. Bye.